For the first time in U.S. history, a major disaster declared for all 50 states. COVID-19 infections on the rise. This pandemic is destroying life and livelihoods for too many vulnerable families here in America and around the world. Just the extraordinary loss of life is absolutely tragic. 671 New Yorkers died on Sunday, which is about one. No foundation can replace the role of government. Right now, during this crisis, we need government leadership, government investment, and government action more than ever. At moments like this, philanthropies like the Rockefeller Foundation can use their resources and their reach to bring people together to solve difficult problems. We're bringing together school districts, mayors, governors, food companies, and delivery companies. We've committed $50 million to the response to COVID-19. And we've done that because we know that this is a crisis that requires urgent action. You have to move from panic and posturing to a data-driven, evidence-based response. And that starts with access to testing and data around who has the virus and where are they. We're bringing together industry, science, and government to rapidly scale up access to testing so vulnerable families and essential workers can go back to work and be safe as they do so. We're working to make sure that treatments are available to those who are vulnerable and those who get COVID-19. We are experiencing a food security crisis. There are more than 30 million American kids who depend on the school lunch program who are no longer in school. That was their main access to nutrition. So we're partnering with alliances around the nation to make sure those 30 million kids get access to their school lunch. I'm also quite concerned about unemployment and a long tail recession that disproportionately burdens lower income and minority families in America. Working families in America have not had a raise for 40 years. And that's been the case even in a growing economy. Most of the gains of that economy have gone to people who have capital as opposed to those who provide labor. And as a result, 40% of all American households didn't have $400 in the bank to help them get through this crisis. We cannot just support bailouts for industry without making real investments in America's workers. The Rockefeller Foundation has focused in the United States on helping those working families that are considered asset limited and income constrained. And that's 90 million people in this country. And what I fear the most is a 10-year recovery coming out of this crisis in which those 90 million Americans do not get a shot at advancing their lives and being hopeful about their children's futures. And the actions we take right now are critical to make sure that, in fact, they do. So the Foundation is working with governments to make sure there are policies in place that help workers protect their families, paid family medical leave, expansions of earned income tax credit, and other cash benefits for families. I saw a photograph of a subway car during the COVID crisis. The subway car was filled with Latino, Latina Americans, with African Americans sitting too close to each other, some with masks, some without, clearly putting their lives at risk to support others. And the photo should make all of us angry that we live in a country where there's disproportionate harm during a crisis like this to minority populations. We should be angry about the fact that America's workers haven't gotten a raise in 40 years and therefore have to sometimes choose between their lives and their livelihoods. We knew after the 2014 Ebola outbreak how to prevent global pandemics from becoming global crises. This was predictable and avoidable. A modest leadership investment and real global cooperation could have prevented this crisis. 
Our first priority is putting in place an early warning system that would allow visibility of data when outbreaks occur and science-based decisions about sounding the alarm for when a global pandemic is a real threat. We know how to build that system. The Rockefeller Foundation has invested in data systems, in public and community health, in dozens of countries around the world and here in the United States. And we have a series of partners that can come together with the World Health Organization and others and make sure that that system is in place for the future so this type of crisis simply doesn't happen again. Over time, we need a different type of capitalism that's much more friendly and much more supportive of those who work in America. What really gives me hope is the fact that I think people now recognize uh, who is an essential worker in America. And we will recognize that nearly half of Americans did not have enough savings to even sort of get by during this kind of crisis and have had to choose between their lives and their livelihoods. It is my hope that our new normal is one that recognizes how essential labor and work is to the American economy, to American safety, to American strength, and to American competitiveness. And now the challenge is, can we come together and do something? We should resolve to make sure as we come out of this crisis that we build an economy and we support economic policies that help those families build savings for themselves, invest in their children's future, and reconnect to the spirit of hopefulness and the American dream.